Well, so it's a little bit weird, isn't it? I've got, anyway, so anyway, my name's Dave. Some people know me as Google Dave. Um, if you want to know why it's Google Dave, I don't work for Google, if anybody's asking. Um, but it's, it's a short story, but I haven't got time to tell you. So if you want, to, if you want me to tell you, I'll tell you later. Uh, I'm a, a co-owner of an employer brand agency, which is based in the center universe, which is actually almost here. It's in Liverpool, the center universe. You can laugh at that one if you want. Um, but we've also got offices in London, New York, and San Diego. And we do employer brand, candidate experience, well, employee experience now, I suppose, as well, uh, talent attraction. And we work with loads of brands like RBS, BT, Apple, Microsoft, American Airlines, Vans, North Face, and we figure all this stuff out. And um, I got given the title candidate, experience, uh, candidate engagement. And, um, and the war for talent, which, to be quite honest, is completely over. The war for talent is over. It's the war for time and attention. We, are, we started life as a marketing agency. Time and attention is the currency of engagement. Okay? To get someone to give you their time is really, really hard. A lot of content is invisible to people because it's shit. It's not worth giving your time to. It's as simple as that. So we have to work really hard to figure out how to get their attention, then their time, then how do we get them to care about it. I spend my life doing that. The science of engagement, if you Google the science of engagement, it's, there's loads of research out there. The BBC have done some incredible research on engagement. But in essence, the first thing is convenience. How easy is it? How easy is it for me to give you my time, no matter where I am right now. And I, was, I remember, I was with, um, if you've ever been to any of the True events, the Builders, I was in an event at True London the other week, and we were chatting about tech talent. And obviously, tech talent has lots of choice. They probably have four offers at any one time. And one of the things we talked about was, get the offer to them faster. How fast can you get the offer to them? Because get there first. And that was a really interesting thing because we have these candidate experiences and we map them out and how long are they? But how quick can it be? And that was really interesting. So convenience is massively important. Not, not make it easy, but convenience. It's different. Ease is different to convenience. And if you want to create a great experience, the number one thing in any service delivery is ease. Just make it easier. Empathy. In the world of marketing, we need to lead with emotion. There's five, there's five emotions that help connect with people. They're happy, sad, fear, anticipation. And there's another one, I can't remember the fifth one off the top of my head, but you normally have a slide for it. But if you, anyone watch Game of Thrones, it's kind of let me down, Game of Thrones, a little bit, hasn't it? It's kind of let you down. But you just got to see the next one, haven't you? So anticipation, see, she's laughing. What happened? I mean, what's going on? It's gone rubbish. I don't know what's going on. Um, line of Duty, anyone seen that? That's pretty cool, but not as good as the previous ones. Not as good as the previous ones, but you've just got to see one more. But empathy is about understanding it from their point of view. And basically, that creates the experience. And engagement is multiple experiences on a journey. Candidates just don't come and check you out once. I think the stat is they check you out on average about 14.5 times. They spend up to seven hours checking you out before they decide to apply. So what are you creating in terms of engagement? And once you've got hold of them, what do you do next? What do you do next? So the other thing is tr truth builds trust. I'm sick of saying the word authentic. It's driving me mad. It almost feels completely unauthentic to say authentic. But telling the truth really matters in this world. Lies create loss. We're working with a huge retail company across Europe at the moment. And they have retention issues because they're not telling the truth at the st early stages of engagement. They're just spinning a positive message when actually they'd be better telling the negative message. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about give and get later. But truth definitely does build trust. And companies are judged on the company that they keep. And people do their best for people that they trust. And if you check out a piece of research by a company called Edelman, they did this huge global piece of research to see who do people trust the most online, and it's people just like themselves. And it's not the corporate message, it's people just like themselves. They're more likely to believe the employee or somebody who is in their shoes. So I thought what I'd do is I'd talk a little bit about how we go and understand people, so we then we now to engage them, 
And then I thought I'd tell you, show you some things and concepts about what we do across a journey. So the first thing is you want to build a community of them. Okay, I don't like the phrase talent pool, because if you put people in a pool, they drown. Especially when they go in a CRM or an ATS, where they literally just go to die if we don't look after them. And don't just talk to them about jobs. Be a business that gives value first. Understand the community of who you want to connect with and go and add value. And go and give before you get. Go and give before you get. Monzo, who, who's, who's had a Monzo? Sure. Anyone got a Monzo card? Yeah? The golden ticket to get the Monzo card. Okay, they do something really clever. Monzo's purpose in life is to give you the bank you want to use, right? I'm with HSBC, I'm just moving out at the moment. Is anyone from HSBC? They're a pain in the arse, HSBC, right? They are just a nightmare to deal with, right? A nightmare. But Monzo want to give us the bank we've always dreamed of. Real high purpose, but they believe in it. What they do is they have a community where they go out to their customers and say, what would you like your bank to do? How would you like the app to work? How would you like to be able to transfer money? Would you be able to track the trends and get recommendations of how you're spending your money and how it could be better? Do you want to save the pennies off every 99p purchase or whatever it is and be able to put that in a pot somewhere else? They then put those questions into meetups for tech. And they run meetups every month for their own tech teams, but they do one clever thing. They invite external tech to help solve the problems and create the bank we all want to use. And it's a Trojan horse talent attraction tool because they're making friends before they need them. And the way that they communicate with them is via Slack. And they've got something like 6,400 external tech developers in their Slack channel that they nurture with communication every day. And they use Slack because tech people like to use Slack. So they understand their audience. It's really, really clever. There's the meetups. They have loads of content. They capture it, and they amplify it and use it to engage and attract tech talent. So think about the communities you operate in. I'm not gonna, we've got concepts for all of these. Grads, when we speak to grads, career advice is crap at universities. Right? When you speak to the lecturers, they're like, they've got to get their dissertation done in, the right, in their final year. The students are like, we haven't got time to think about a job because we've got our dissertation to go. And when you say to them, what was career advice like from day one? They're like, it's a load of crap. We didn't really speak to anyone. So who's the brand? A brand could step in and actually amplify into a community world-class career advice. And they, when we speak to the employers, they say, the grads don't have enough soft skills. Well, the big brands have learning and development. They have masses of content they could use to give advice and give people soft skills in the early stages of university, helping them make friends before they need them. The tech space, 80% of tech talent has a pet project outside of their work. They do pet projects. They're always creating, writing code, pushing boundaries of new technology to create new things. What brand steps into the space and champions pet projects, no one. But there's opportunities there to facilitate the conversation around pet projects and be known and own that community. Because the 80% of them are doing it, but no one speaks to them about it. So that's just an example of how you can think about communities, but don't call them pools. And I don't like the word this talent pipeline thing either. That sounds mechanical as well. It's not very human. I just had to get Klopp on a screen, by the way. But basically, what I want you to think about, Klopp is a hugger. Now, where's she gone? Do you hug like that or like that? Because we were having this conversation over there. It's like, I'm a hug. I'm a, I, I kind of give these six-second hugs. But what you need to think about is how do we digitally hug and nurture talent when we've got them in the CRM or they're in a social community or you're having a conversation? And we've built... Um, who's got a CRM? Any of you lot got CRMs? Definitely got ATSs, something like that. Okay. So in the world of B2B, right... You might have heard of Salesforce, HubSpot, Pardo, whatever it may be. Marquito is another one. In this world, you've got things like Beamery and Aperture, have something they plug on and all this kind of stuff. But it's not the tools, it's how we use them. Okay, it's not the tools, it's how we use them. Don't just send them content about jobs because you won't get their time and attention. You won't get their time and attention. The first thing should be offer some help 
that you've identified that that audience is in pain about. So if it was grads, it might be, here's soft skills or career advice. Here's some things, having spoken to lots of grads, we think you might be interested in. Have a look at that. The second piece of communication that goes out, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Grad, we sent you that piece of information. Was it any use to you? Did you enjoy it? And this is all automated, by the way. And each time they engage with that piece of content, they're given a score. Okay, so Beamery, for example, will give you a score. HubSpot lead scores the opportunity. So CRMs need to lead score the candidate and the engagement they have. The next one might be, I've just been thinking about you. Here's something else that people have mentioned in your space. Here's a story about a grad just like you when they were worrying in the last 12 months at university. Give them a score if they engage with that content. People who also found that article interested, here's something else that they found interested as well that you might like. And the cycle goes on, and you earn the right to get them to care and give them things of value. The same for tech, the same for grads, the same for any audience, whether it's engineers, whether it's retail, whether it's call center staff. What is it that helps their pain? And think about how you build a flow of content that you can use across a journey. And that's probably, that's probably a four to eight week journey. We've done that for Siemens globally, and it's used across the world, and it goes with their CRM. And we're constantly gaining feedback. So let's try and understand them. Let's try and understand them. We've gone well beyond the candidate experience, okay? If you want to engage talent, you've got the candidate experience, the onboarding experience, which I've heard them talking about before, the employee experience, and the ex-employee experience. The ex-employee experience is really interesting. I heard um, Tom mentioned before from Nationwide, tech talent leaves with an average of just under two years. Grads, grads on average leave, 16% leave in the first year of finishing their grad, uh, grad scheme with you. 20% in year two, so that's 36% of grads are leaving in the first two years. How much do you invest? You need to keep in touch with them. The boomerang hire is really important. The boomerang hire is really important. But you need to nurture them right across the journey because at each point is an opportunity to engage external talent. So how do we think about this? So what I wanted to do is just show you some of the things we would do to start to sharpen our minds to build a plan for engagement. This is from Stack Overflow. It's 120,000 developers across the globe have been surveyed about what they're interested in. So the first thing is what, is, what insights are out there what data's out there that gives us information that we need. And what you've got is what men look for and what women look for. And it turns out that men and women are different because the number one thing that men look for is compensation and benefits. The number one thing that women look for is the environment and the culture. So imagine that we're in a pub and there's a male, someone who's a, a male tech person. The conversation starts differently possibly to what it would do if it was a female. So that makes sense. So now we're starting to think, okay, then I want to know, but why is that? Because the data points me in a direction, but the humans will tell me why that is. So this is stuff that's out there. Another piece of work that we've looked at is total jobs. This was a, something like 100,000 people. This is all out there. What's interesting here is how they phrase or theme what people are interested in. Okay, and what happens is, by countries, they've highlighted the top five. And what you can see in the UK is, the number one thing in the UK is a good work-life balance for tech people. Okay. In Germany, it's being appreciated. Now, what's interesting in India is their top one and two is career development, learning, and training opportunities. They're not even in the top five for Germany and the UK. So what this is telling us in territories to get engagement, it's completely different. I can tell you in India, if they refer someone, it's almost like a marriage proposal. They care about it that much. Far, far more than they do in the UK. It's almost like the honor of being referred is massive for them. Okay, but we learn that by speaking to them. So that's an example of some of the data. When we're looking at uh, experience mapping, this is something that we do when we uh, create career websites for our clients. And basically, we get I don't know, 20 grads in the room or 20 tech people in the room. And the first one we go is, what is the trigger that makes you look? So there's a stimulus and something happens. And there's some of the things that came out. This was done in, this was done in um, Gibraltar. Anyone been to Gibraltar? Strange place, Gibraltar, mate, isn't it? 
strange place, Gibraltar. I actually watched us lose against Napoli in Gibraltar, but that doesn't really matter now, does it? Um, but we look at the triggers. What is it that makes them think it might be time to leave and they talk to you about it? The next step is what you do. Some people talk about what well, we do on CV or we go and look at LinkedIn profiles. They talk to their peer networks. They start to research who might be interested in, of, into them. Then we go, where do you go? And what was fascinating with this tech people in Gibraltar was, they talked how much they looked on YouTube for the team members they might be working with or the leadership within the organization and looking for videos of them to see what they're like. And they said, we go to YouTube to find that out, not the career site, to YouTube. And that was really interesting for us. And then they started to tell us about, we make playlists of these videos so we can watch them when we want. And that's interesting. Think about how you create your favorite lists in Netflix. So if we want to get greater engagement, the career site we're developing for this company right now is you can create playlists of videos of, people's, of the people teams. So people can watch them whenever they want, at the right time, when it's convenient to them, and we're going to make it easy for them. That came because of this process. What do they want to find out? Engage me, Alexa. Lots more people are talking about voice and how do we engage them, and live Q&A. I'd love to be able to speak to somebody live at a time that's convenient to me. So those things are really interesting when you understand the audience because it helps drive how you're going to engage. I'm sick of talking about personas, but there's just a couple of things I want to show. This is a tech persona that we've done for Blizzard, one of the world's biggest entertainment companies over in um, San Diego. So this is what came out. This is Freya. She's a software engineer. This is how we speak to her. If, she's, uh, if we talk about Blizzard towards her, identifiers, influencers, notable behaviors. But what we do is we start to go into what content does she engage with. This is a tool called, anyone heard of BuzzSumo? So BuzzSumo is a tool that probably every digital agency on the planet is one of their first go-to tools to figure out what gets engaged for an audience. What's interesting here is that. That's Reddit. Who, who uses Reddit here? Okay, so some of you are in Reddit. Reddit is probably in the top five, six social channels on the planet that nobody uses, and it's huge for conversations, and conversations equals conversions, and conversations is definitely an engaged community. And the tech community loves it. And look at the amount of words that gets engaged. So this gives you an idea of where to go and the type of content to engage them with. And there's a free version, the paid for version, so check it out, Buzzsumo. It also will give you the influencers in that space. There was a question around influencer marketing that would take me about half an hour to answer it, so I'm not going to do it, but definitely you should be thinking about influencer marketing because the influencer has the community that you already want to jump into. It's the, the question is, is how do you be part of it or how do you give into that community? What's interesting is if you look for the top influencers in tech, there's not many women. That's an opportunity. It's not a weakness, that's an opportunity. How do you create female tech influencers? Then what it does is it tells us the five favorite type of content that Freya likes. Video, how-to articles, list articles, why articles, and what articles. We then shape our engagements around what they are. So it's not just telling us what channels and what type of content. It's giving us the formulas of the type of content. And this BuzzSumo scrapes all the content on the internet. Right? It's, it's incredible. Then what we do is we take the employer brand and the characteristics of the organization and we say, what are the four or five things that we should talk about and how should we talk about them? Tom talked about micro EVPs before and he's absolutely spot on. If you've got an employer brand, and um, I don't want to talk about pillars and get technical on you, but if you've got characteristics that you think you should speak about, there's probably one or two that are much louder to Freya than the four or five that the company has. Two of them she's probably not even interested in. So what's the point in talking to her about it? The give and the get. We're working with someone at the moment who gets 1.9 million applications a year. They want to repel talent. We need to repel as much as attract. How do we say that's not, you, you disqualify yourself? There's one other company we worked for. It's basically, it took six minutes to decline a CV. And it was something like 70% of people's time was declining CVs. So why don't we decline them before we get there? There's nothing wrong with putting people off. Because even if we take them in and it's not right, they're going to leave. So think about that. It's becoming more and more a thing is how do we want to repel 
the many and attract the few. It's something we're really looking at at the moment. It's been quite interesting in engagement. And then, to play it all through, the types of assets and explain a video, become your best, how we would do it and where it would go. A list, push the boundaries, the seven tactics you can adopt to take your skills to the next level. We know that you'll like this type of content because Bulsumo has told us and make a difference. What makes a great software engineer? That seems quite simple now, but it's based on insights and evidence. So you've seen the process that you go through to get engagement. We then want to make connections. I touched on Netflix. Look at how we consume entertainment. We shouldn't be talking about storytelling. We should be talking about story building. We need to move from adjectives to adventures and how do we show them. And to keep engagement, we need to keep telling the story. We need to keep telling the story. It's how we think about it. This is an example of a piece of work we do with Vacamp. They're, the, uh, they're like made.com in Holland. They're the number one online retailer in Holland. This is Anna, who's their digital persona. Anna, is, uh, she's a digital marketing manager. She's really cool. And we think about serialized content. Think about episodic content. If you want to get organic reach now in the social channels without paying for it, you have to get engagement, otherwise it won't get the reach. It's how all the algorithms are changing. So the first story about Anna is her work-life balance, and she loves fashion, and she's working in fashion, doing a job that she loves, but they've sent her to Milan to capture the moments and share it online. That's episode one for Anna. Episode two is a couple of weeks later, as she's grown and showing her own personal development, she's running her first big meeting with some of the leadership team, and she's capturing it. She's capturing little vlogs, and she's, we use a... Um, a tool called uh, Scene, Scene It, which is an app, and she can capture it. There's another one called All True, which we've been using for story building. That's episode two. Episode three, a couple of weeks later, is rather than the corporate video where you're just pointing it and the CEO's saying something, it's Anna showing her confidence and growth to ask the lead, who is the CEO at Vacam, what's it really mean to work there? And it's much more personable. It's actually a bit of fun. And we actually transcribe that content into a brochure for grads. And then that brochure, you can put an app, your phone over it, and it plays the video. So we get a content cascade. That's episode three. Episode four is a Facebook Live. So now that we've built engagement and you've got to know Anna, you can now speak to her in real time and find out what it's really like to work at Vacamp. Has anyone used Facebook Live? Facebook Live is definitely, Facebook wants you to create your own TV channel. So you need to be thinking about how you, and then you have an asset. We did a Facebook Live and employer brand and we got about four and a half thousand viewers. And we've used that content now over and over and over again. Live like a local. This is for a company called Amadeus that we work with in Nice. When we've been speaking to personas now and you're looking for relocation, in Gibraltar, I mean, this is nice, but in Gibraltar, one of the things that stunned us was how many people hardly talked about the job. They talked about the integration into the local. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it was, they were so passionate about what's it like to work there and how do you integrate me into Gibraltar. Is anyone, this Gibraltar, right, 11,000 people walk to work every day from Spain and cross the border. They don't cross the road. They cross a runway. I was like, what the fuck is going on? They're crossing the runway? 11,000 of them? But what, was, what, what we were finding out was they're so passionate about living on the coast of Spain. And they had, they had all these little tales and the secret pubs that you need to go to and where the expats are and where people like yourself are. How do you learn a language? But then they were starting to say to us, how do you make us become friends with people and live like a local? And so the content we're starting to produce for people in relocation is very much a concept of live like a local, but through the persona's eyes. And we started looking at travel destination marketing and thinking, what do they do and how do we bring it into this world? Because it gives us the engagement and it's answering the questions that's on the candidate's mind before we get to speak to them, before we get to speak to them. Job descriptions are all crap. We leave them to the last minute. This is an example of Visa for cybersecurity. We rewrote them and we used a formula that's come from a guy called uh, Robert McKee. His alumni... I've won 60 Oscars and 300 Grammys. He taught Peter Jackson how to write a film. And basically he has a formula which is empathy, curiosity and surprise, insight and action. We rewrote the job descriptions that the conversions went up 27% simply by changing the job descriptions. 
and you'll definitely want to take a photograph of this next slide. These are the questions that we ask the candidates to find out. So we put the cybersecurity advisor in one room and we said, we asked them these questions and we said, how would you answer them? Because now we're getting real insights and engagement phrases and sound bites and meanings and sentiment that we turn into a job description. Just get more if you need it from what you've already got. Okay, so that's job descriptions. That's almost the candidate experience. We've built a tool called the Job Page Grader. It's free. You can put your job description in there. I'm not going to play the video because I've run out of time. And it will give you a score. And it looks at sentiment, conversion, engagement, SEO. It looks at gender bias as well. Copy and paste the URL. Put it in the tool. And basically, it will give you a score. And it's free. We've given it away. I'm going to whiz on from that. The next moment of onboard, and I think the most important moment is the moment you tell them. Does anyone remember the Disney advert many years ago where the, the mum and dad are there and there's like a piece of, there's a poster over, like they've got like, I don't know, wrapping paper over the thing and the kids are sat there like that and they're going, guess where we're going? And they rip the, they rip the sheets down and it says, we're going to Disney and the kids are going, yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. They're not going for two years, but they're dead excited about going to Disney. The, the best moment often is the moment you tell them you've got the job. Use that moment to heighten advocacy and referrals. Don't just make it a bog standard letter. Create a moment of magic. How do you leverage that moment? This is something we're doing for Sage, which is over in Boston in the UK. The next stage is bring advocacy and referrals together. This, piece, this is something we're building now for BT. Referrals is an interesting thing because when you actually speak to people who work in organizations, they never feel like they're gonna get the money. And they never know how their referral is getting on. No one feeds back to them. And actually, if you read a book called Nudge, which is about choice architecture, it's about rewarding the simple little things. Reward the gift of giving the name, not the, employ the employment. Think about how you can keep get them pushing out content into their micro communities and reward that. And the multiple rewards mean something and then you ask them to refer, because that whole onboard and employee experience, you've got masses of communities that you just need to tap into, but don't, don't make them do it, ask them to do it. You can't make them do anything, and that will definitely drop engagement. The other thing is definitely the alumni. I touched on it before. LinkedIn are brilliant at this. I, I, I get to speak sometimes quite a bit for LinkedIn, maybe not as much as I used to. I've been in their offices sometimes, and there's huge parties going on. I'm like, what's going on here? This is amazing. Here's a Peroni, Dave. They know I like a Peroni, so I have a Peroni. And it's full of people who used to work there. And they are so passionate about LinkedIn, but they keep that engagement. And it's a genius thing, because it brings people back. We've already talked about tech and grads. But it creates advocacy, right? If you keep in touch with them, Offboarding is just as important as onboarding. Tom mentioned that before. If you create advocacy, you'll help with more talent attraction. And actually, they might still be a customer. I was listening to someone, I can't remember who it was, and they basically said, the moment they tell you they're leaving, as long as you don't want them to leave, that is, think of them as a customer, and you'll change the way you think about them. Think of them as a customer. So it's really interesting. Go and check out what Microsoft and Google are doing. Google, if somebody leaves to start up their own business, they'll support them as an entrepreneur. Microsoft have a thing going called Beyond the Blue Badge, and it's a podcast, and they continually interview people who used to work for them and make them a hero to share their story all the time. There's loads, I mean, there's loads of stuff they're doing, and they're doing some incredible stuff, but this boomerang hire is something you need to be tuned into. And finally, the channels of, for engagement. I've touched on Reddit. But there's one thing I think we need to get stronger with, which is use the channels you've already got. So don't just think of your talent channels of the place that you want to amplify content for engagement. This is Vacamp. We use their online platform to promote jobs and content around culture. Because they get a mass of traffic. We created an explainer video, a 30 second explainer video for BT. It went in their, so their social channels for consumers and got 4,007 clicks to the website, the careers website, in 24 hours. And it converted at about 22%. And that was simply because we used a community they've already got. So think about the real estate that your organization's got, and can you actually seed content for engagement in the channels that you may not have used before? 
Facebook Canvas ads, the way we do ads is completely changing. This is story building. You can tell the story across carousel ads. You can use images, you can use videos to draw them in. I'm sure you've seen what's going on with Instagram now, and it jumps into IG, IGTV, and is it 16.9 or 9.6, and how are we going to engage, and all that's going on. So that's something else. And then Alexa. When you speak to tech talent, this blew me mind, this, this is at RBS, and RBS, anyone from RBS? Might be from RBS, yeah. So we do loads of work with RBS. And what was interesting, we spoke to the tech team in uh, Edinburgh. And they started talking about how they're all writing code for Alexa. And one guy had written code uh, to open his garage door. He'd go, hey, Alexa, open the door, open the garage door, and it opens the door. And we were, like, fascinated by that. And the more you speak to them, the, the, there's now a thing called Alexa briefings. So we're looking at how RBS can have an Alexa brief every morning if, about the world of tech. And you can go, hey, Alexa, tell me the RBS brief on tech. And Alexa will tell you. And voice is where it's coming at a big pace. Don't. Uh, forget about voice when it comes to engagement. So whistle stop tour. Um, I've gone through think about it, how do we understand people, and then I've gone through candidate experience, onboarding, employee experience, and, and after they've gone. But there's loads of brilliant stuff going on in here today. Loads of brilliant stuff. And I've been to loads of gigs here as well. I saw brand new Evies in here, and that was pretty cool. And Chic. And uh, Soul to Soul. They were crap, actually. They were really disappointing. I was pissed though by the time they got on. But the main thing is, it's not about ideas, it's about making ideas happen. Don't walk away from this place today with three things to focus on. And if you're unsure, focus on the things that are, are easy to implement and have the biggest impact, and do those three things. Thanks very much. <laughs>